my first attempt at doing an open website in an academic context has been for my ESRM 492 service learning in New Orleans class. And this is a class wherein um, we have some component here on campus, but the, the bulk of the time spent is actually in New Orleans is, is outside of California. And this was um, uh, my first attempt at a tool that would be both serving to the, the students in the class, but also help um, try to bring the experience to uh, folks outside of the class, folks outside of the academic environment, and a first stab at being a collaboratory space. So let's take a look at what we did. So here's our site. Here's the site that um, we created. This has our, our logo for our class, and it's about service learning New Orleans. Um, a little bit of descriptor about the types of things that we do. Um, these worked somewhat well. So if you click this guy, pictures and vids, it takes us to um, multimedia space. And this is going. This is a plugin that will. Uh, so I was posting pictures to our a Flickr account uh, for this class, and that is what gets fed here. If you hit this, it's going to start a slideshow, and you can either just jump around and look at the slides, or um, or they'll they'll uh, populate themselves. This is a posting of the most recent uh, Flickr images from uh, that, again, that same account. And then um, while we have a lot of things on uh, YouTube and in different places, these were a couple backgrounder things for some of the other universities like Tulane that, that worked with us that I want to make sure they definitely saw these, um, some logistics uh, information. So we, I actually put these on here. And in theory, I can have many, many videos, descriptor videos on here, which is um, not the case yet. This is one of the my great failings. I think I know how to do it now. My idea here was, again, this is another plugin. My idea here was to um, uh, have folks be able to follow us as we go throughout the trip. But the way of geocoding was not entirely clear, and I messed it up several times. And so, unfortunately, it, it, record, it started when we were here in uh, California. And at this scale, for this type of experience, the stuff that we try to do in here is, is more or less lost at that scale. So I, I'm gonna, we're going to repeat this in the future. I think I know how to do it right now, but this was, um, this was a, a trial that didn't, uh, didn't work particularly well. If we jump back to our menu, we have uh, the, the initial landing spot. We have an About page, which, which talks about our class. Uh, another thing that I've learned uh, from uh, many of my colleagues here is um, I initially set this up with everything being commentable. So every page, people can leave a reply. And the general idea, uh, the general suggestion is to not do that, to do that only at, say, the landing page and then perhaps blogs, but the static pages, um, not particularly um, helpful or useful. We have some info on the overall course and uh, have links for people that are, that are starting to get to learn about what we're doing. Um, again, uh, pictures, text descriptions, colleagues we meet with, things we do overall. This, was, this is a sort of truncated uh, introductory syllabus, if you will, uh, type elements so that folks that were curious as to what we're doing can come here and get a, a brief overview of the course experience and then all kinds of other um, all kinds of other things and you could go ahead and click through and look at those some of those are more extensive than our others we also have a um, so that, that the videos I showed you before were the multimedia and then we have a link to um, and this this has been popular again for folks that don't know about the kind of stuff we're doing um, this is one of our press conferences a few years ago and um, these are uh, popular press accounts of work we're, we're doing in the class or things that have grown out of the class so things related to Deepwater Horizon things related to uh, our class based work in uh, New Orleans to recover wetlands. Uh, th this is a photographer from the local newspaper when there used to be photographers that work for the <laughs> local newspaper uh, in Louisiana. The key part 
of this page, the most important part of the page for us, at least in terms of this primary experiment, wasn't so much the background or info, but rather the blog function, which was a, a documentation and a source of reflection um, about our trip. So in this case, we've been back for a little bit now. Uh, students are entering data. We post pictures, uh, pictures, uh, links, YouTube links that are embedded, um, uh, and little little blog updates. Um, these are students ref uh, after they've returned from their trip. Um, reflections on what they uh, felt, what they experienced. Again, this is a, a, a failure of mine. This is a, a one of many different uh, geo place-based marker, however you want to refer to it, uh, plugins. And the idea here is that folks can denote where they made their posting, but unfortunately, the way I had it set up was messed up. So for for silly reasons, it, it if you didn't actively change something, it said you, you were in Cerritos, California, which is kind of messed up. But again, these are all posted by, in this case, this is Stephanie's post. Here's one from MJ. These are all different students' posts. In this case, when we returned, so these are generated while we're uh, back in California. Here's a poster announcing our uh, poster session for the campus. Um, some artwork some of my students have done, et cetera. So we can keep scrolling on down um, all these reflections post-trip. But then if we jump forward, or excuse me, uh, farther back in time, we can see uh, examples of, of the actual way this was used. I was attempting to use this as a reflective uh, uh, tool. Students initially were told they had to post uh, two postings a day. That didn't really work out. It worked much better when we switched to saying you can do one post a day from the field, and then if you can, one post uh, once you're home and, and have some chance to reflect. Almost all of the students are using um, the mobile app, the mobile WordPress app, to do their posting. So take their picture and post directly. Um, take their poster, in this case, while they're entering data back at our hotel rooms. Um, take post from the swamp, um, etc. Sleeping in the swamp. Um, in this case, uh, this is a, a piece about our Tulane service learning uh, colleagues. And uh, this is uh, our, our colleague, Jair, the instructor from Tulane. And uh, my colleague, uh, John Lambrino, is from Oregon State, key partner in all of this service learning activity stuff. And then we have some videos about, uh, about both uh, other people's impressions of service learning and, uh, in this case, uh, students uh, from other universities' impressions of our collaboration, uh, wildlife, these kinds of posts. So, so we had a mix, really, of the types of posts that are uh, just pictures. This is what we saw, uh, a little bit more reflective type of stuff with hyperlinks, etc. I was a bit disappointed, again, initially, because folks were really just going up and posting um, quick pictures or funny comments, and uh, I was able to get them to do some more reflection, but, but this was becoming more of a, a Facebook-type experience. I was really worried about that. I thought that was messed up. I thought that was not perhaps an effective use of our limited resources. Uh, reposting images from, you know, that people are posting about us, so this sort of self-referential thing, keeping going around and around and around. Um, but turns out uh, this was actually much more valuable than I figured. So while students are posting, um, especially post-trip, this has created, in effect, a travel log. And students, when they returned, really uh, separately, in many instances, were responded very positively to this this um, blogging experience, particularly how it was able to uh, trigger memories and, oh, we remember, I remember we did this on that date and we did this other thing on that date and, and this and that. Another thing that's been great is it allowed uh, my students, especially I think some of my more first generation students, um, a bit more freedom. Um, what I've noticed is many of our students this trip or similar trips, it's it's one of the first times they've gone out of the state, one of the first times they've gone on a big trip by themselves. And um, what I tend to find is oftentimes the, 
sometimes uh, parents, first-generation college goers, sometimes moms are, are particularly well represented in this population, uh, seem to be worried about their students. And so I've had some years where um, people's parents are not constantly, but, you know, once a day calling, checking on them. Is that okay? Is that okay? Sending them emails. How's it going? How's it going? And this appears to have really, really helped with that. Um, a lot of parents uh, responded to me in our in our post-trip meeting how wonderful it was, and they felt that they were able to follow along with the students and share to some extent in their experiences, knowing what they were doing, uh, understanding the things they were getting insights into, et cetera, because it was outward-facing, because it was... Uh, not behind a firewall or not limited to uh, a, a particular a number of, of students. Now, you can limit this so that folks can't comment or that only authorized people can post, which is what, I, what I've done. O- only authorized students can post, um, although my, 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 our colleagues and collaborators could post as well. But in other words, it wasn't a, a universally uh, open um, page. And that really seems to have been, have been great. The other thing that this... Um, format has really, um, I think, helped with is it's really helped students reflect back on all the work they've done. Not only just triggering memories, but going back and go, oh my gosh, I remember when we did, we did this thing or we did that thing. And, um, and really wonderful. Uh, one of my worries was, quite frankly, that um, students might post some embarrassing things or some whatever stuff. So we, we had, you know, several talks about you know, this is this is for the world to see. This is for your parents to see. This is for future employers possibly to see. Let's be a bit serious about this. And they all were uh, they were all great. They all um, they didn't do anything irresponsible to begin with. But more importantly, they didn't they didn't share that with the world. So it was it was really wonderful. We did have issues though with the posting. Um, the most important issue. I don't know if I I I think. Many of them have been fixed or resolved. But if we go back, let's say, to an early, to an early post, earlier post, let's see if we can find one here. Alligators, our students feeding the alligators, uh, installing community gardens. That's apparently me um, uh, relaxing. <laughs> Unreal. That's a fake picture. Let's see. Okay, so there are a few things, there are a few issues with um, uh, just the presentation that has come up about uh, because of the way we interact with the media. We are mo- we're not on campus for this activity. We're oftentimes on the limits, on the edge of internet connectivity. And so, for example, in this case, uh, now, the way we have our um, web domain set up, uh, we don't have a massive amount of space. Therefore, for high data uh, for, for, for things that, that they need a lot of memory, a lot of storage, we don't post them directly inside the web page. So in other words, our videos, for example, are posted to YouTube, and then we link through um, to YouTube. In this particular case, I was rushing, and I posted these pictures. The uh, appropriate um, thumbnail didn't have time to render, and so it, it's now inside um, our blog post as this sort of ugly, ugly start. As soon as you hit start, it, it plays fine and, and that's great, but it, it's, it looks a little bit uh, messed up. We've had several times when students were trying to post and uh, they were on the edge of internet uh, connectivity. I'm trying to see if I can find one of these. No, no, more videos, more data, dead armadillo. Um, yeah, well, in any event, um, we had several issues. Uh, I asked students to go and, and fix those if, when they found those, and so they might have gone back and fixed these. But several cases we were uploading from the mobile app, from the Word, WordPress app, and um, what would happen would be uh, the, the image wouldn't rotate. I mean, excuse me, wouldn't, wouldn't upload, wouldn't upload, wouldn't upload, wouldn't upload, wouldn't upload, and we tried again, tried again, and maybe it would eventually work. But there was some... Uh, connectivity issues such that it didn't fully load. So we had several pages where students would make a post, they'd say a sentence or something, and then there'd be a the image there, there'd be a broken image file, for example, and you know didn't look great. We also had issues with a lot of a lot of the times problems with grammar, problems with spelling. 
that primarily derived from the fact that we were on um, mobile devices in a bright sunny day trying to type and enter stuff, and it and it just is easy to for your thumb to slip on to a different letter or what have you. And so, in looking back on these, at first I was very embarrassed, and I was like, "Oh my God, these." These guys can't spell. They can't write. And then I started notice it was, noticing it was starting to happen to my post, too. So the notion of creating a professional front piece is a challenge. So what I tried to encourage them to do is once we got back to the hotel at night, if they had time, and usually they, we slept for about five to six hours a night, so not didn't have a whole lot of sleep, and we were go, go, going every day. So my students were rapidly exhausted by, um, by the, this, the pace of this trip. Uh, they just simply didn't have time. But when they did have time, they were encouraged to go back and look on a, on a computer screen if they, if they had that luxury and, and you know, fix their punctuation, fix their, their grammatical errors, what have you. And, uh, but that is, that is a clear thing that um, seems to be a consequence of the mobile phone way of entering information into these blog posts. So that's a little just quick bit about, um, about my web page. What we're planning on doing in the future is taking a lot of this and and really uh, trying to improve upon it. So great first try, let's do this better. I really want to improve on the geospatials data. So where are we posting? And um, improve upon the where have we been, this, this, uh, this logging locations and what we've done and all of that great stuff. A lot of um, the problems with this website were derived from my being naive and this was my first attempt at this. Um, I hope a lot of stuff will be better. One last thing I'll just mention is it's very easy to get lost in the WordPress templates. There's something on the order of 70,000 templates out there that define the look of your site. It is, I spend way too much time thinking about this and I just can't help it. But what happens with me at least is I get in here, I start messing around, I find a template, seems great, start working, and then there's something I wish it would do that it doesn't quite do. So then I delete that one and add a new template in and try that. And that seems to work for a while, mess around for a bit, get it configured. Oh, and then it doesn't do this other thing. And, and it, so you have to kind of settle in and just sort of say, well, you know, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to do everything I want, but, but here's the deal. In general, I like dark websites um, in terms of how I teach my students to make posters and give PowerPoint presentations. Uh, the, it, the, the graphics just pop much more. They stand out. They're actually easier to read. Um, for a whole variety of visual things, the way our eyes process data, we see things better when it's a light image or a light uh, font on a dark background. But in the field, that can be a bit of a challenge. So in the field, it's actually probably nicer to have a lighter background and dark text, uh, given that um, the reflections we sometimes can get on our phones from the sunlight and and bright lights and things of that nature. So while dark is great in a classroom or viewing it on a large screen, uh, in the field you might want to consider using a lighter template uh, background for that stuff. This, is, is, this has been wonderful though. It's been great that folks can give input from a whole variety of uh, places, not just CSUCI. And I think this has huge potential for a lot of our uh, courses and a lot of our collaborations. Uh, here and on into the future. So thanks a lot for letting me uh, ramble on a little bit about um, our initial trial with our websites for uh, ESRM here at California State University Channel Islands.